Almighty God, the I am that I am, the consuming fire, the one who is, the one who was, the one who is to come, the Alpha, the Omega, the Almighty God, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, glory be to your holy name. Thank you for what you did on Monday. Thank you for what you did yesterday. And thank you for what you're about to do tonight. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Tonight, Father, give us your best. Give us your very best. Lord God Almighty, give us your very best. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout a big hallelujah. Well, I shake hands with one or two people and prophesy to them, God will be God will give you the best tonight. You may please be seated. I bring greetings to those of you who are watching again from all the viewing centers all over the world. I, I thank God that we have been receiving testimonies, and there will be many more. I want to inform you in advance that I don't know exactly when we are going to end tonight. So if after one hour we have not finished and you feel like going, you are welcome to go. But I have a feeling that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you will even forget time. Because my daddy has told me that this is one night none of us will forget in a hurry. And when he was talking to me, he told me specifically, he said, and even you. That you means Pastor Adeboye. <laughs> and it could mean somebody else. Who is that somebody else? Ooh, thank you, Daddy. In First King chapter 19, I'm going to be reading from verse 11. Two seventeen, First Kings eleven, First Kings nineteen rather, from verse eleven to seventeen. And he said, that is God said to Elijah, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. 
But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entry of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What dost thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said unto him, God is going to speak to somebody here tonight. <laughs> Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Hazael to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, that thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Mehola, shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. And it shall come to pass that him that escaped the sword of Azael shall Jehu slay. And him that escaped from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. I happen to be a farmer's boy. I grew up in the farm. And when we light a fire in the farm, and the fire is small, we shield the little flame with our hands. So that the wind that is blowing will not blow out the fire. But then as the fire grows, it goes it gets to a stage where it forces your hands away. Because at that stage, the wind that blows can only make the flame bigger. Tonight, the wind is blowing. The flame is no longer small. The wind is going to blow the fire, and the fire is going to become very big. In the passage that I've read to you, the wind blew and the fire came and then God spoke. What was it that God said to Elijah? Please pay attention to every word. He said to him, Go and anoint Hazael to be king over Syria. That's number one. Number two, Go and anoint Jehu king over Israel. Number three, go and anoint Elisha to be prophet. Now what is God saying? God was saying 
to Elijah. Up to now, you have been dealing with one wicked king. But now, I'm going to supply you with two kings that will support you because you are the one anointing them. And God is saying, in essence, I will increase your area of influence. And what is the importance of influence? Influence is that which opens doors. There are certain things people will do for you if they know you are a man of influence. There are certain doors that will open unto you if people know that you are a man of influence. Some years ago, I went to Kenya and there, there is an institution belonging to United Nations there. And I just wanted to visit the place to see what's going on because one of my children was working there. Of course, security there is very tight. My son drove to the gate, told the gatekeeper, I want to go in. And he said, fine, but who are those people in your car? Oh, my father in the Lord. Ah, you know the rules. You can't bring in strangers here. And for some minutes they were arguing forward or backward. Then the, I mean, the gatekeeper summoned the senior officers, etc., etc. Finally, somebody said, one of them said, Who is this your father anyway? And he said, Pastor Adeboye. Ah. Pastor Adeboye? Yes. Of the Redeemed Christian Church of God? Yes. Why didn't you tell us that? And the man who said, no, you can't go in, said, I will lead the way. From tonight onward, you will become a person of influence. In Second Kings chapter 2, if you read the story from verse 9 to 15, and we will be talking about it a little later. Second Kings chapter 2 from 9 to 15. When Elisha took the mantle of Elijah, rolled it together, and smote River Jordan. What he said was, Where is the Lord God of my father? I am small. I don't have the power to cross River Jordan on my own. But my father has the influence. I am using the influence of my father. Jordan, open. Tonight, in the name that's above every other name, anytime 
you call on the God of your father, River Jordan will part. In 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 8 to 17, 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 8 to 17, Elisha said to the Shunammite woman, I am a man of influence. Who do you want me to speak to on your behalf? The king? When I ask the king to do something, he will do it. The commander-in-chief? Who do you want me to speak to? The woman said, don't worry, I'm also a man, a woman of influence. Then Elisha heard that the woman was barren. And he said, ah, <laughs> now there is a superior influence here. If I talk to God, God will answer. And he turned to the woman and said, Nine months from now, you'll be carrying a baby. Tonight, with all humility, I'm going to use my influence with my Father in heaven. And I will say to all of you who are expecting the fruit of the womb, Today, that womb is going to open. First thing God said to Elijah, I will enlarge your sphere of influence. I want you to do something for me. There's quite a lot of things we'll be doing tonight. That's why I'm not in a hurry. I'm going to take my time tonight. <laughs> because this is the last night for this one. Uh, by next year, God will take us even higher still. I want you to tell the fellow next to you with all boldness and tell the fellow, I'm already different from what I was when I came in, you know. <laughs> My influence had already increased. <laughs> then the Lord said to Elijah, He said, you have been fighting your war alone. You alone have been fighting against Ahab. But now, the king of Judah will help you. The king of Syria, rather, will help you. The king of Israel will help you. The prophet that is going to succeed you will help you. You know what that means? God says, you will no longer fight your battle alone. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, from verse 9 to 12, Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12. He said, two are better than one. He said, if there's a quarrel, if there's a fight, and someone is knocked down, a second fellow will help him up. And he said, when there are three of them combined, then it will be difficult to break them. I've come to announce to you that from today onward, you won't fight your battles alone. Yeah. 
And then he told him, he said, uh -huh. I'm going to give you a young boy who will succeed you, who will continue to help you till you leave. You know what he was saying? He was saying to Elijah, from today onward, your future is secure. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10, Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10, Say ye to the righteous, it shall be well with him. On the basis of that alone, I prophesy to somebody, your future will be all right. I can go on and on from that, but let's leave that alone now. Let's move to another fellow who had an encounter with the wind and the fire at the same time. His name, Elisha. In 2 Kings chapter 2, from verse 9 to 15, 2 Kings 2, 9 to 15, he was there when the chariots of fire and horses of fire came down. And the Bible said, Elijah went up by a wild wind to heaven. The fire and the wind combined. And Elisha was there. What happened? In a single day, before he could do anything at all, suddenly, the one who used to be just one of the sons of the prophets became the leader of all prophets. He had a promotion that is unbelievable. Ah, and the Lord lives. <laughs> By the time you wake up tomorrow morning, you will be on a new level spiritually. Oh, you may say, but daddy, uh, the promotion I'm thinking about is a promotion in my place of work. Ah. <laughs> I believe you are old enough to know that the spiritual controls the physical. If God promotes you spiritually, <laughs> every other thing will begin to take its position. I say it one more time. Before you wake up tomorrow morning, you will be on another level spiritually. Let us, another thing that you need to know, is that as soon as he crossed River Jordan, I don't, I, I don't want to talk about crossing Jordan. I've already mentioned it before. He just called on the God of his father, and things happened. <laughs> it will amuse you that some people have, who thought that they, they are very wise had uh, called on me and said, uh, Pastor Adibri, what is this? Everywhere we go now, we hear it. people say, the God of Adeboye, the God of Adeboye. Why don't you stop these people? Ah, they are not calling on me. They are calling on my God. And my God is the I am that I am. My God is the ancient of days. My God is the Lord of hosts. My God is the one who can do all things. My God is Jehovah El Shaddai. My God is the one who can never fail.
Let somebody shout hallelujah. And I said to them, what is the problem? <laughs> and they called on my God. And he answered them, you want to quarrel with that? Elisha crossed Jordan by using the influence of his father. And then as soon as he arrived on the other side, <laughs> the people in Jericho came and said, help us. We have a problem. What's your problem? They told him, he said, no problem. You have been under a curse all these years. Now I decree curse over. Yeah. And the Bible says the curse ended according to the word of Elisha. In the name of the one who called me. Every curse whatsoever in your life will be over tonight. And I want you to take note of that because we are coming to that later on in the prayer. Because the course is not just going to be over because I say so. From tonight onward, with your own mouth, anywhere you see any curse, you will cancel it. <laughs> Elisha, because he was there when the Horses of fire and the chariots of fire came and the wild wind blew. Long before he died, kings were calling him daddy. His influence became bigger than that of his father. Throughout the time of Elijah, he was fighting kings. But in the time of Elisha, kings were calling him daddy. I pray for someone here tonight. I prophesy to someone here tonight. Before you leave this world, presidents will call you daddy. Heads of state will call you mommy. But before we leave Elisha, there is something you need to understand here. In that second King chapter 2, you remember verse 9 and 10. When Elijah said, whatever you want me to give to you, ask now before I be taken away from you. And he answered and said, I want a double portion of your spirit. What was it Elijah said? Elijah said, Ah, you have asked a hard thing. But because he had that encounter 
with the fire and the wind at the same time the hard thing he asked for was granted tonight we are going to ask God for hard things and whatever you ask God for you will get tonight let me take a third example I will try, I'm trying to be as brief as possible so that we'll have enough time to do our praying. And that is in Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. From verse 1 to 4. Acts 2, 1 to 4. You know what happened? Children of God were gathered together in the upper room. Just as you are gathered together, wherever you are now, in one accord, and suddenly the wind blew, suddenly the fire followed, and the Bible said the people began to speak in other tongues as God gave them utterance. And when you read the passage further down, when the people heard about what was happening and they gathered together, they said they were all hearing these people in their own languages, they were talking about the glory of God, the great works of God. In the first example that I gave you, God alone spoke to Elijah. In this third example, God spoke through men. Tonight, you are going to speak. You are going to make decrees. You are going to decree First of all, you are going to decree to your mountains. Because of this encounter with the fire and with the wind, you will decree to your mountains. According to Mark 11, verse 23, Mark 11, verse 23, you're going to say to mountains, ha, 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 your secret is out. Mountains. I'm coming against you in the name of the one who was before mountains. Mountain, I'm coming against you before the one who was the original beginning of beginnings. Mountain, I'm coming against you and I'm telling you, mountains, you will get out of my way and get out of my way today. You're going to speak to your mountain. A mountain is going to move. That is what is going to make tonight a night you will never forget. But that's not all you are going to do. You are going to decree to yourself. You know, the Bible says in Job chapter 22, from verse 21 to 28, Job 22, 21 to 28, he said, you are going to decree a thing and it will be established. It means whatever you say to yourself tonight, it's going to happen. Consider the example of Mark chapter 5. From verse 25 to 34, Mark 5, 25 to 34, that woman with the issue of blood had been bleeding nonstop for 12 years. Many a times, the only section of the story we remember is that she took the arm of the garment of Jesus Christ. But before touching the hem of the garment of Jesus Christ, she had made a decree to herself. What was the decree? He said, if I may touch the hem of his garment, 
I will be made whole. No prophet told her that. Too. She decreed it. There is somebody here today who is going to do a decree. So you're going to decree to yourself. From tonight onward, I will be well. From tonight onward, my breakthrough will come. From tonight onward, I will know no more sorrow. From tonight onward, poverty is going to leave me alone. Somebody is going to make a decree, and that decree is going to be established. If you are the one, let me hear you say amen. But that's not all. You're going to decree to all those who are precious to you. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 11. Isaiah 45, verse 11 says, Concerning the works of my hand, command ye me. Ah, that your son who is misbehaving, you're going to decree concerning him. That mother in law, that father in law, that is causing you trouble, you're going to issue a decree. That son in law, that daughter in law, that is causing you trouble, you're going to issue a decree. That boss in the place of work, that says you will not be promoted, you are going to issue a decree. Everything that is causing you anxiety or problem, you are, because God says, command you me. You're going to issue decrees tonight. <laughs> and I tell you, long before the end of this month, you will have testimonies. You know the story of the woman, the Shunammite woman, in 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 18 to 37. 2 Kings 4, 18 to 37. Her son died. He said, is that so? She took the boy, laid it on the bed of the man of God, and got ready to go and see the man of God. The husband said, woman, why are you going to the man of God? It's not the end of the month to say that you are going to pay your tithe. It's not a new moon. Well, what are you going for? She said, all will be well. That was a decree. When she got to the man of God, the man of God said, ah, how is your husband? Oh, all is well. How are you? All is well. How is your son? All is well. She decreed. And death released her son. Somebody is going to decree tonight. And say, as far as I'm concerned, from this moment on, all is Not only that, you're going to decree, you're going to prophesy to dry bones. In Ezekiel 37, from verse 1 to 10, Ezekiel 37, from verse 1 to 10, the man of God looked at dry bones and did as God commanded. Speak, tell dry bones. Dry bones, live again. And the moment the man of God opened his mouth, the Bible says, bones came together to bones. <laughs> hey, those of you who have been looking for the bone of your bones, as of you have been looking forward to your partner and you haven't found him or her yet, 
bones will find bones tonight. The Bible said flesh covered the bones. And you notice the bones didn't miss their way, even though they were dry. And then the man of God prophesied again. And the wind blew. And the dry bones came back to life. There are some opportunities that you have lost. Not you really alone, no. Including myself. There are opportunities that I have lost. That I'm going to command. Wherever they are, they have to come back. My dry bones must come again. There are things that the Almighty God intended for your welfare, well being, that out of carelessness, out of laziness, out of one thing or the other, are already gone. Ah, but in the name that's above every other name. When you are beginning to share your testimony during the next Holy Ghost service, everybody will hear and shout for joy. And so before we go to the real practicing of what God wants us to do tonight, that's why I told you, one hour is not going to be enough for I beg you, if you are not on the side of the Lord, if you are not a child of the living God, if you know you are still living in sin, run forward now to come and give your life to Jesus Christ so that when the wind and the fire combine, it will be in your favor. So I'm going to count from one to ten. Any one of you who will want to surrender his or her life to Jesus, any of you backsliding and you want to return to the Almighty God so that when you begin to prophesy, when you begin to decree, it will happen. Come now to the altar, wherever you are. I'm counting one. Two, three, mm. the choice is yours. This can be the new beginning for the rest of your life. The choice is yours. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Okay, those of you are already here and, and before the altar, and those of you are on the way, cry to Jesus now and say, Please save my soul. Oh, I want to be on the side of God. I want to be part of your family, oh Lord. Save my soul, forgive all my sins. 
I want you to be answering my prayer with fire from now on. So please save my soul, forgive all my sins, and I will serve you for the rest of my life. Go ahead, call on the Almighty God. And the rest of us, let's stretch our hands towards all these people and intercede for them that the one who saved our souls will save their own souls also. Let's go ahead and cry unto the Almighty God and say, Father, have mercy. Save their souls. Forgive all their sins. Wash them clean with your blood. Let them become true children of God. And those of you see on the way, you have to hurry up now because I'm about to pray for salvation. Don't stop. Just keep coming. Make sure you get to the front before I finish praying. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. My Father and my God, I want to bless your holy name for your word. I want to thank you for these people who have decided to come forward to surrender their lives to you. Please remember your promise that whosoever will come unto you, you will no wise cast out. They have come to you now, Father, please receive them. Let your blood wash away their sins. Save their souls. Write their names in the book of life. Let them become true children of the living God. And from now on, any time they call on you, answer them by fire. And let them serve you to the very end. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. We want to pray now. And I beg you in the name that's above every other name, I want you to pray with all your heart. I want you to pray as if your life depends on it, because your life depends on it. You will stand on your feet, and you are going to cry to the Almighty God, and you are going to pray As a decree, you would lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, I thank you that my day has come at last. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. I thank you because my day has come at last. But I thank you that my day has come at last. Oh yes, Lord, I thank you because my day has come at last. I just want to thank you, Lord, that my day has come at last. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Then you lift your voice to him, almost as if you are angry. And say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree every Jordan Blocking my path, part now 
open your mouth and cry unto the Lord. I decree in the mighty name of Jesus every Jordan blocking my path part now part now Jordan blocking my path. Part. I decree. Part. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You're doing very well. Continue like that. Open your mouth and say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I decree every curse upon my family over now open your mouth and cry to God every curse operating in my life in, the, in my family I decree in the mighty name of Jesus you are over now. You are over now. You are over now. You are over now. Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now listen to this very, very important story very quickly. Because now you are about to decree concerning every member of your family. Several years ago, a girl left home and went to join Fela and the Katakalakuta Republic or whatever. And the mother ran to the church. I said, what can I do? When a girl goes there, that's the end of the story. I said, we will decree. We will decree your daughter out of that place. And we made a decree. And suddenly, everybody there began to fight her. And she ran back home. Open your mouth and cry to the Almighty God. I said, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I decree concerning every member of my family, none of you will go to hell. Go ahead, cry unto the Almighty God. I decree concern every member of my family. None of you will go to hell. In the mighty name of Jesus, none of you will go to hell. I decree 
None of you will go to hell. My children will not go to hell. My husband will not go to hell. My wife will not go to hell. My sisters, my brothers, my uncles, my aunties, my nephews, my cousins, my nieces, my in-laws, none of you will go to hell. I decree. I decree. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. You're doing very well. And I want you to know God is already paying attention. I want you to lift your voice to him with the same seriousness. And say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I hereby decree every plant that you have not planted in my body, in my soul, in my spirit, in my place of work, in my family, in your church, be uprooted now. Cry unto the Almighty God. Every plant, every plant that my Father in heaven has not planted must be uprooted now. must be uprooted now every plant that God has not planted in my body, in my soul in my family in my place of work in my ministry in the church of God must be uprooted now Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Ah, and you are going to pray. Pray this prayer. I don't even need to beg you how to pray it. You just say, Father. Every opportunity I have already lost. Every dry bone in my life must come back to life. Come on, cry unto the Almighty God. Every opportunity I have lost, every dry bone in my life must come back to life. I decree. I decree. I decree. I decree. Every opportunity I've lost, you must come back. You must come back. You must come back speedily. You must return. Every dry bone in my life, you must come alive again. Oh, all the opportunities I've lost.
all the gifts of the Holy Spirit that I might have lost. Every fire in me that had gone low, come back to life. I command you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And now we want to combine two prayers into one. You're going to cry to God and ask the fire to fall on you. You're going to cry unto him and ask the wind to blow in your favor. So you open your mouth and say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, let the Holy Ghost fire fall on me. Let the wind of the Holy Spirit blow on me. Go ahead, cry unto the Almighty God. Let the fire fall and let the wind blow in my favor. Oh Lord God Almighty, let the fire of the Holy Spirit fall on me afresh. And let the wind of the Holy Spirit blow in my favor. Ramo sheke rende re moko ronde ke kama kotonde re makashanta. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Re moko kotonde re makakate nde ke re makashaka tonde re kotonda. Must be. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. going to pray with you and for you in a moment. But on that day, Elisha asked for something. And Elijah said, that's a hard thing. <laughs> but that's the opinion of Elijah. That's not the opinion of the almighty God. That's not the opinion of the rushing mighty wind. That's not the opinion of the consuming fire. Do you have something you want to ask God that is very hard? That only God can do it? Go ahead now for two minutes. Ask God for something hard. Something very, very hard, no matter how hard, ask God.
In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. My daddy says, the almighty God says, the all-sufficient God says, is that all you can ask from me? Come on, go ahead, ask for hard things. Please, ask him for big mighty things Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I had got ready to pray for you. And my daddy asked me to tell you, all I have to say is, it is done. And so I decree it is done. It is done. It is done. Go ahead. Praise the Almighty God. Just bless His holy name. Bless His holy name. Bless His holy name. Bless His holy name. Oh, Daddy, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. The devil has lost the battle. <laughs> it's already too late. Oh, glory be to God. Let me hear somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> okay, lift your handkerchiefs and bottle of hell to, to the Almighty God. Please take very good care of this handkerchief. This handkerchief is going to open many Jordan rivers. And so, my Father, my God, I ask that to saturate these handkerchiefs and these bottles of oil 
lift her to you all over the nations of the world saturate them with your anointing let your fire fall on them let your wind blow across them wherever they are used let yokes be destroyed let miracles happen let darkness vanish let the sick be healed let the dead come alive let ways be opened and let joy abound and let your name be glorified father bless the offering of your children sanctify it use it for your glory and don't let your children ever lack again daddy i thank you i'm asking on behalf of every one of us here anytime you return don't leave us behind thank you father in jesus mighty name we have prayed go ahead wave your handkerchiefs and may the devil mad god bless you